So we're going to start this adventure off about 20 minutes south of Grand Rapids, Michigan. A little private lake that's just packed full of carp. It's got a rustic access, so there's really not many people on it. I was in the mood to smoke some of these carp. All right, guys. Sorry about the bouncy camera. I have you uh, rubber banded to a stick wedged in the front of my canoe. I have to apologize for that. It's going to make for some shoddy video. I got the old vintage bear recurve with me today. I don't shoot recurves a lot, but this is a convenient one to have in the boat. So what we're going to be going for today is a large carp. Um, I'm in a little private lake. Um, it's one of my favorite little holes to shoot carp, but the problem is, is it's been raining a lot lately, so the water is extremely muddy. So I really can't see much, but we're going to do the best we can. I want to go through some equipment. Like I said, I have the uh, bear recurve here. This thing's only 52 inches, so it's really convenient to have in a canoe with you. Sorry about the lighting, guys. I look like a giant shadow right now. The next thing I have on here is just a simple bow fishing reel from Muzzy. And I put a little adapter on here so that I can fight the fish a little bit. It's like a pole adapter. And this all just goes right into the uh, attachment, your uh, grommet attachment on your bow here. So without a whole lot of explanation, I'm gonna get right after this and see if we can't get into a nice carp here. <laughs> Nice one right here. Give a shot right over him. This is my first miss of the day. I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> this bow might be a little bit light poundage for this setup too. I noticed I didn't want to fling that arrow very good. So we'll try to go for a little bit closer shots if we can next time. Side of the boat, it's hard to shoot over there. These carp, they got eyes on top of their head, so it's hard to uh, always get a shot at them. My GoPro battery dies super fast, so I gotta be careful on uh, leaving that on. Trying to go for headshots on these guys. Got him. Not a very big one, but it was a good shot. All right, guys. Perfect size for the smoker. And that's what we're going after. Nice cart. These just spin, and after you turn the point, these slide forward and the fish can slide off the arrow. Alright, the 
GoPro ran out of batteries, so. <clears throat> Those things kind of suck. I mean, they take good video, but the batteries don't last for shit anymore. But now I only got one camera to worry about, but you guys can't watch me shoot the fish. Tip you guys down a little bit. smoker guys all right so I don't have too much more battery so I'll probably only get to shoot like one more of these on camera missing an eye. I think I've been after him before. That ain't hardly fair. <clears throat> Caught him on his bad side, I guess. I'll get him off, get him off the, the arrow here. <clears throat> so next I decided to load up the canoe and do a little river fishing. I was looking for some gar in uh, Nashville, Michigan, which is about 15 minutes away from Battle Creek, Michigan. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you'd never know you were close to a big city like that, and I had an absolute blast. Trash in a river you know you might look it over you might drop something in the water while you're on a canoe trip and you don't think much of it but what happens guys is it all accumulates especially on these down trees and things all this you know there's a looks like a bait a styrofoam bait container there there's a bunch of gallon jugs in here you can't see on the other side of this but there's more in there some gatorade bottles i'm gonna pick all this up because it's just there's glass bottles in here too. It's just uh, disgusts me when you're in a beautiful piece of water like this, and uh, you all you can all you can see at these these nice little spots like this where you can stop is just people's trash. So let's get this stuff out of the water. Some high sea here. Pick up your trash, guys. Exactly what we're after here. Let's see if I can get him in the boat. Ah. All right, nice little gar. He's gonna be good eating. Took me a long time to find these gar in this river today. I was told they were in here. I can get him in the boat. This is a good eating size right here. <clears throat> I 
This is exactly what I'm after, folks. This big gar. It's not real big, but it's just the perfect size to eat. I'd like to get a couple more of these, but unfortunately, I gotta get going. I got about 45 minutes left to fish. Look at this awesome river, though. Just a beautiful piece of water here. Maybe I'll have to come back tomorrow. Beautiful piece of land. I've seen a lot of deer. I'll try to bring another camera with me tomorrow. So we've came to a critical part of our journey. <laughs> I don't feel like going downstream anymore because it's already going to take me about two and a half hours to go back upstream. Um, I don't have a pickup vehicle for my canoe at a, at a road or anything like that. So what I have to do now is turn around and then uh, paddle back upstream. Uh, it, it'll be a little while before I check back in because it's just it's gonna be tough going getting back up this river um, But I just wanted to To take a second while I'm here. I Got somebody's hunting blind over here, but I wanted to show you a little bit about This river here, I mean this is just Just awesome the way that this bends like this and there's these deep holes Normally in a deep hole like that on a corner of the river, that's that's where a lot of the wild wildlife in the in the river is going to be. That's where a lot of the fish are going to be. Um, but man, what a cool property these these folks have got here! I bet they really enjoy it. And uh, it looks like there's plenty of good deer hunting here too. So hopefully they're enjoying themselves with that. All right, guys, I'm going to get my paddle out and head back upstream. And you're walking around just guarantee yourself that no matter how remote you think you are that there's going to be traces of people and sometimes it's in the form of a broken jagged sharp glass bottle like this um, be careful be mindful of uh, what you're doing when you're walking around in in the water and mostly uh, stop throwing your trash in the river guys it's terrible So navigating through rivers like this, going upstream can be kind of tough, guys. Can be kind of tricky. If the river is a, a big river, you can usually scoot right up the side of the river and the water, the current won't be as strong and uh, you can scoot up the river fairly well. If it's a small one like this that has lots of debris and stuff, you really got to uh, concentrate on what you're doing. Um, nobody wants to fall in the water and get wet or you know have something even worse happen so really just take your time paddle hard but paddle smart guys and uh, take the easiest path as you can see there's multiple paths I could have taken there that would have caused probably failure and either I would have had to retry it or worst case scenario tip my boat so I just wanted to mention that guys I know a lot of you guys probably don't worry about it because you don't paddle back upstream anyway but if you do, that's one thing just to keep in mind. Um, choose your route wisely. Okay guys, now that we've uh, got our, our guard pike, um, we're, you're gonna need to know how to clean these things. Um, Excuse the bees guys, there's a lot of uh, bees out here because this time of year, um, if you have anything dead out, these little yellow jackets are gonna be all over it. Um, with that being said, let's talk about how fresh these fish are. So, you can see the dots on this fish, you can see the slime on this fish, and you can actually see the fish breathing. You know that's a fresh fish. Um, the color's good. It, if it looks discolored guys and if, if it's got any bloat to the stomach if it's not moving like this um, But also if it looks dried out 
there's a good chance you let that fish sit too long and it, that affects the meat and the meat's probably not going to be very good in that. The fresher you can keep these fish, the better off you're going to be when it comes to cleaning them. As you can tell, I didn't uh, dispose of these fish in the boat like a lot of people would. I purposely tried to keep them alive as long as possible because I knew I was going to be eating these. So you're going to need a pair of shears. You can use tin snips. Uh, these are KitchenAid scissors actually, but they're really heavy duty and they cut through about anything. And you're going to need a flay knife. That's pretty easy. Now anytime we use a flay knife, we always bring a sharpener. Any kind of knife we keep sharp and a bowl of clean cold water. Now I'm going to get you guys over my shoulder here and we're going to run through this real quick just to keep these fresh. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do guys is we're going to need to take our knife. This knife's already sharp, but just to make sure, we're gonna go through the sharpener with it. And you're gonna make an incision. These guys got kind of an exterior uh, skull thing going on. They're kind of a prehistoric beast. You're gonna go just behind that, where it meets the scales, which are basically an armor plating, and you're gonna make a hole. Just, like I say, just behind the skull here. It's gonna make a little bit of crunching sounds. Just big enough for your scissors to fit in, guys. Don't, don't worry about dulling your knife all up. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, try to get these where you guys can see them. These bees are just going nuts here. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get this where you can see it. Where you can see the, the backbone, I should say. And you're gonna start an incision right down the spine of this fish. You can hear how tough the exterior of these fish are. I go around that last little fin there. I know a lot of people cut it right off. Okay, now that I've got an incision, we're gonna take our flay knife, once again, making sure it's sharp. And we're gonna get into the meat of this fish. We're just gonna flay the scales back a little bit to get started here. Now what I do is I like to cut a T in the top of these. A good sharp pair of shears makes a big difference, guys. Like I said, tin snips work great. I see a lot of you guys using those. And I like to make a T at the back. I start at the back and work my way to the front, but you can, you can do it the opposite way. It really, that's all kind of pointless. Um, as soon as you get down to where the rib cage is, watch out. Like I said, be careful of the, um, around the eggs if they got eggs and be careful around the guts, guys. You don't want to get that. That's bad for you. I've actually been told the eggs are poisonous and I've never tested that theory out. So if, as long as you stay away from that, you're, the ribs here, you're going to have a boneless fillet. Kind of demolish this one with my fishing arrow. Try to stay away from that. But that's a lot of meat right there. Put that in here, keeping it cool. We're gonna do the other side. I'm gonna get our other gar out of the way here. We'll do him in just a second. Players will cut right out really easy. And like I said, they're all boneless. So you don't gotta worry about any of that. This is hard to do, trying to get it all on camera. So you're getting these big, long, boneless back straps out of this. Put them in our clean water. We're gonna get started on the next one.
Okay guys, me and Coulter got the Z-Grill going. It's at just over 300 degrees. We got some melted butter on there that we've added some spices to. I'm gonna show you guys what we added to it or I might have Coulter show you because he's gonna want them. So let's look here. First thing is garlic powder. That's right, we added that to the melted butter. There you go. Second thing that we added was lemon pepper. Lemon pepper. That's right. The third thing that we added was holy garlic. Holy that's, garlic. That's right, and it's just a mixture of spices and a lot of garlic. The last thing we added to this recipe, guys, is just a fresh lemon, and we just squeezed uh, two of these slices into that mixture. This is what we've done with our gar. We've cut it up into slices, uh, little steaks, and we're just gonna put those on the grill, get those warming up before we start basting them with uh, the butter mixture that we got going on here. Now we're going to close this down and let those heat up just a little bit before we start basting them. And all we're going to do guys is we're just going to every so often open up that lid and hit it with some butter and uh, all the seasonings that we got in there as well. And we're going to just let this cook until it's done. I cook it, um, usually it's done within about 40 minutes uh, depending on the size of your fillets. So I'm not going to give you guys a timeline on that because sometimes your gar pike are going to be real thick and sometimes they're going to be real thin. Um, you're going to have to just watch that on your own. Uh, but usually it takes about 45 minutes for what I got in here. And we just continue to, to baste it with the mixture we just made. It turns out fantastic. So about my favorite way to do gar pike is I like to soak it in milk for about 30 to 40 minutes and then put it in your favorite breading of choice. I've used a lot of it. Um, this is my favorite breading here that's above the bowl. I picked this up at my uh, local sporting goods shop. And then I fry it just like you would fry any other fish. Um, the difference is, is gar pike's not like your average fish. This is going to firm up a lot like uh, alligator. Um, for those of you that haven't had alligator, it will firm up like a white meat, like pork, kind of. Um, but if you are a fan of alligator, you'll definitely, definitely enjoy eating gar pike fried like this. just about done out here on this grill when they start twisting up like that that usually means they're done and me and Coulter are going to try out this uh this gar pike we're going to see which one he likes best we're going to see if he likes the fried fish or the grilled fish so 
So I like both of these recipes about the same. Um, tonight I went for the grilled fish. I just was in that kind of mood. Uh, my boy on the other hand just mowed down on both of them and ended up uh, deciding he was more of a fried fish guy. Is that yummy? Thank you. Mm. Which one do you like better? Do you like this one? Or do you like this one? Oh, this. Right? Okay. Do you like this one? Okay, too. Okay. Right it is. <laughs> Can you say bye?